Hey YouTube, it's Penny. I'm going to bring you a couple of dreams that um, have to do with lesbianism. And I was hoping after I had the first dream that I could ignore it, <laughs> but I had a second dream. Um, one was on September 27th and one was on October 27th. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and bring those to you because I believe that Father is instructing me to do so and I want to obey him. So uh, the second dream I'm going to bring you that one first. Uh, I dreamt that my former friend, um, this is an adult woman that I had met in church uh, in my late 20s. Um, so I'm dreaming about her. Uh, she's sitting close to me in the dream. And she actually had her arm around me. And she was explaining to me that she was in love with one of my other friends whom I'm no longer in relationship with, but this was um, a gal that I knew in college. And I could feel in the dream, I could feel like this negative spirit um, kind of pulling on me to, uh, it, it like encouraging me or enticing me to try to experience her emotions so that I would understand um, lesbians, like try to kind of like get inside of her heart or her mind or, and I resisted it. And I said to my girlfriend, I'm sorry, but I just can't go there. And it's interesting because this dream was very different from the previous day, dream that the father gave me about lesbianism. So in that first dream on September 22nd, excuse me, 27th, I dreamt that I was witnessing a high school gym class where the students were outside playing baseball. All of a sudden, a boy attacked a girl in the center of the infield. She was on the ground in the fetal position, trying to protect herself from the attacker who was kicking her. The gym teacher, who um, was behind home plate, like he was refereeing or umpiring the, the PE game, um, baseball game, so he went out onto the field to break it up and two other boys were holding the attacker back from the girl and in the dream I held some sort of a position in the school administration and approached the scene with authority demanding an explanation from the attacker you know, I was like why are you what are you doing <laughs> and he spewed out um, an explanation and he kept calling the girl a he Okay, so as he did, the boy got, the accuser, got taller and taller until he was about 20 feet tall. And I was looking up at him with absolutely no fear. And I asked him why he was referring to this girl as though she were a boy. And he said it was because she was going to come out of the closet this school year. Keep in mind, I got this in September. Um, as a transvestite. And that was the reason he was beating her up. I told the two boys who had him by the arms to take him to the principal's office, and then I had turned uh, my attention to the girl. I got her off to the sidelines and was attending to her wounds. She was a very large um, and, and what most people would consider an unattractive girl, um, not someone that you know most boys would consider you know feminine. Um, she had a short, kind of irregular haircut. She had a lot of piercings on her face and tattoos all over her body. Like she was kind of trying to disguise herself in some way. I should interject at this point. This was in stark contrast to the other dream that I had about these two girlfriends of mine who were both, are in real life, beautiful, petite, very attractive women. Um, would be considered that way, at least in the, in the eyes of most um, people in America. So big contrast here. So once she was resting comfortably and I was certain that she was, you know, going to be okay physically, I got up to leave, you know, believing that my work with her was finished. But the spirit came over me and I knelt back down and I told her, you know, that I was a believer. And her head snapped toward me. Um, like she was like, what? Um, and it was interesting because as she did, I felt this spray come off of her 
off of her and like sprayed me. And it was like a, a spray of hatred and fear. I can feel it. Um, so even though it felt physical, I knew that it was spiritual. And so I remained calm and I looked into her eyes and gently said, we're not all like him. Some of us love you. And the look of fear in her eyes communicated that she didn't believe me. So I repeated, some of us love you. And her face began to soften as she comprehended my sincerity. And for a third time, I assured her, some of us love you. At that point, it finally registered. I could see on her face that she believed me. The entire time I was looking directly into her eyes and could feel love flowing out of me and into her, it reminded me of the scripture where virtue or love flowed out of Yahushua into the woman who touched the hem of his garment and he felt it physically. As I walked away from the girl, I lifted my hands in praise and thanked the Father for giving me the opportunity to share his love with her. Um, so I, I also I want to share uh, a personal testimony of something that happened uh, in December year before last, I believe, um, been about two years ago. I had the opportunity to um, share the love of Yahushua with um, a young man in his 20s who was in a homosexual relationship. And um, I actually went, I responded to a Craigslist ad and uh, went over to see a piano that he was selling. I did not buy his piano, but I spent three hours with this young man. And the whole time was very loving and gentle with him, but I was speaking the truth to him from God's word about homosexuality and the fact that it's not my opinion, that it's an abomination. That's what scripture says. Um, that's what the father calls it. And at one point during the time that I was with him, his boyfriend uh, came in to the room and <laughs> Charlie said, hey, Stefan, come on in and join the conversation. This woman is answering a lot of the questions that you and I have had. So that told me right there that they had been asking about their relationship and whether or not it was per uh, putting up a wall between them and God creator and it was absolutely it was um you know not any more than any other sexual sin um would put up a, a wall a dividing wall between um us and the father and 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 maybe because i've been guilty of sexual sin in my past i had a greater degree of compassion for charlie but um, it was interesting because when, when I got up to leave finally, <laughs> three hours later, Charlie hugged me and he said, thank you for answering all my questions. And um, he said, you're the first Christian who's, who's ever done that for me. Um, and and I, knew, I knew what he was talking about, that, that, that I had not condemned him. Um, and, and I remember at one point even saying to him, Charlie, Stefan is a lovely young man. I can understand why you love him, but it is not okay for you to have sexual contact with him. That's inappropriate. And so um, I have a lot of women in my life, like these two gals that appeared to me, um, you know, in this dream. I've loved lots of women. I love women. I have women in my life right now that I love dearly. But there's a difference between agape, brotherly, sisterly love for our fellow mankind or, or womankind and and crossing a line like that spirit was trying to get me to cross you know emotionally to want to go somewhere that we should not be willing to go and so i think that that's the point of this video is the father wants me to call it out for what it is um ask you to resist the temptation resist the devil and he will flee from you you can have victory in this area in your life it is an abomination um, if you are practicing this sin it says you will not inherit the kingdom of Elohim 
you will not. It is a dividing wall between you and the Father. So he keeps calling us to repentance. He's calling us to holy living, to be holy because he is holy. So that's what I'm going to continue to do. And uh, I do it in love.